Hello everyone, this is Steven Jackson with Imprintables Warehouse and today I'm going to talk to you and show you a little bit about variable data printing. Variable data printing is the process of using a large format printer or printer cutter and being able to create a file that will input to that and having it pull from an outside source or another file to input data into fields to automatically create a, a graphic, a custom graphic for you. Um, it sounds a little complex, and a lot of times when people see it for the first time, it's, it seems a little complex, but it's, it's really not that difficult. And we're going to lead you through the process and show you some examples today. Uh, the software that I'm using today is Roland Versaworks. It comes packaged with any of the Roland printer cutters or most of the Roland printer cutters. It does have a variable data printing option that is included with it. Most RIP softwares will have a variable data printing option in them, and some of them that don't have it included in their basic models have an option for you to upgrade to it. But just for today, we're going to use the Roland VersaWorks in the demonstration today. If you look at the graphic that's on the screen right here, I have several different areas on it. I've got this Eagles Pride. The local high school is the Eagles and we're making some some t-shirts for them that are going to have their graphic in there but we want to be able to put in the names and numbers of the players so we've created a graphic and you can see around it I've got this this line right here and if I select it it's a hundred percent cut contour which is our command name to the RIP software to cut instead of print it's a spot color you can see in Corel it's indicated as a spot color because the little white dot in the corner there shows us that I've got these two other fields here that I'm going to fill in. One here, if you look at that one I selected, it shows VDP or variable data printing underscore player name. And then the other one has VDP, again, variable data printing and player number. So I've set up my two fields where I want the data to fill into. And then I will send all of this to the RIP software that I'm going to use. So I'll select all of this. And then I'm going to export so I go to file and export and we'll, we'll replace the one that I created earlier when I was testing all this out we've got the Eagles Pride underscore variable data printing VDP there I'm gonna do this page only and select it only I don't want to take anything outside of this so we'll export that file and yes I want to replace it and we're going to tell it not to convert the spot colors that I want them to stay in their native there to keep that spot color value because it's actually a command function to the RIP software that it's either going to do that cut contour, it's going to tell it to cut and not print there, or it's going to do that VDP or variable data printing and tell it to input some data into this field for us. So we want to maintain those spot colors as, as they are named. So we'll hit OK and that'll save that for us. And the second example we have today is we're going to do some control tags. So on the second page here, I have a, a control tag. Control tag, inventory tag, whichever I needed. This is probably one of the most frequently used functions for variable data printing is, is having a, the ability to automatically fill in fields on something like this. Again, I have my cut contour telling the, the RIP software where to tell the, the printer cutter to cut. And then I have down here, you can see I've created a field that's variable data printing, VDP underscore serial number. So this one here I also exported earlier, so I would go through the same steps as exporting into an encapsulated postscript, which my RIP software can read. Now for both of these, I'm going to need to have a comma separated value file that's created in Excel that will have the data that I want inputted into those fields. And you can see I've created this Excel spreadsheet, and I have that same VDP underscore player name and VDP underscore player number. I kept the, the lettering and the, the uppercase, lowercase, the same, exactly the same as I had it in that spot color that I'd created in Corel for the different fields. And you can see I have the player's names and the player's numbers all lined up here. So I have the data that I want to input into that variable data printing option right here and I'll, I'll save this as a comma separated value file so I would go to save as and tell it I want to save it as a CSV or comma delimit delimit delimited excuse me on that file so we've got Eagles I'm gonna save over the one that I had before 
It's telling me, yes, I want to replace it. And then it's also telling me that it's not compatible with some other formats, but I want it in this format for the job that we're doing. The other one that I had created was the serial number list. And remember, I had that specific field in the Corel file named VDP, variable data printing, underscore serial number. Now, I want to show you a little trick. I could say here and type in all these numbers if I wanted to, but that would take a long time. Uh, there's another trick that you can use. Now, say if I wanted it to go in one number increments, I can do 12 and 13, and I've set up that I'm going to increase by one in each one of these. I'll select both of these, and then when I've got that little black square in the corner there, I can grab that and drag it down however far I want to go, and when I let go, it'll automatically count up the numbers for me and keep them in the sequence that I had. So this is a really quick way for us to create a data field that will feed into the variable data field in the RIP software and be able to create these property control tags very, very quickly and easily. I'd already saved this one earlier, so we're not going to go through that again. And we'll go over to our RIP software. Again, I'm using Roland VersaWorks. You may be having any number of different RIP software out there. The, the setup and execution of variable data printing is very similar between all of them, but you will have to look at your vendor specifics for the one that you're using. In VersaWorks here, I'm going to bring in the Eagles job first. So I'll go to where I'd save that. And there's my Eagles VDP file. So I'll bring that one in. And I can see right off the bat that I've got a, a cut contour line in there. So this is going to print and cut. And I've got some variable data items in here that I can access. You'll notice in the portion up here, I don't see that line for either the cut contour or the variable data printing in here. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the settings for the job. When I open this up, I can see my job right here. And you see the, the red dotted lines that are moving around. Some people call them dancing ants or marching ants. But that indicates where the printer cutter is going to go back and cut. It recognizes that spot color for me as a command function, and it won't print that spot color, but it'll go back and cut for me. But I don't see my variable data fields that I'd set up, the name and the number that were there. So what I'll do is I'll go down to the tab over here that says variable data. When I click on that one there, I still don't see my fields, but I have the option to enable variable data printing for this job. So when I select that there, it opens up an attributes window where I can adjust things. And now I have the option also to open up and bring in that comma separated value file, that CSV file that I'd created that had the names and numbers of all the, the items that I wanted to input into these fields. So I'll go to where I'd save that one and we'd call that one Eagles. And once we open that, you'll see real quickly that it input all the player names. It highlighted the first row there and recognized that it was a VDP or variable data printing line. And it has the player name and player number as we had set up before. And then the names all the way down and all the numbers, just like they were in that Excel spreadsheet before we saved it as a CSV file. So I can see real quick all these on here. When I select an individual, I can change that individual portion there. I can double click on it and I can rename it to say Jackson. So I can edit the data if I need to go back and do that. Hopefully we got the correct data when we put it in the first time. I can also change the attributes of that entire column, that, that single one there, or the entire column by selecting the column. And you can see over here that my variable data field, as I'd set it up in Corel, it's, it's highlighted. I can actually grab those and move those around if I wanted to. But I'd set them up where I want them before. Now I can look at the different attributes for this. I have text in here, or if it was an image, I could have put an image source file in that Excel spreadsheet and told it instead of an actual name or a number, I would have given it a path to where the picture of the person was or whatever picture I wanted to bring in. So instead of player numbers, maybe I'd make that the image of the different player and it would input that, that image into the area over here if I'd named it an image and given it the path to that. But in this example, we're using text. I can change the font size. Say I want to do it 120. I can take a look at how that fills the field in. I can change the tracking, which is my spacing between the letters. Maybe I want a little bit more spacing in between it. And remember, this is affecting everything down the line here on this whole column. I can change how much opacity it has. I can do auto sizing. So if it goes past the edges of it, I'll click on auto sizing there. And you can see it brought it in because it's going off of the largest one in the entire group. And that it's going to be, if I didn't have auto sizing for this, 
I would take it off and let's go to Wilkinson here and take off auto sizing. You can see it's too big at 120. So by using the auto sizing, it keeps everything in that entire column able to fit in there and keep some kisses consistent between all of them. I can change my alignment on everything if I want to top left, bottom left, center, whatever I want on this. We'll click outside of that guy. I can tell it drawing on a white background. This means it'll only draw on something that's a white background that's been designated as white. And you can see in my graphic up here it had a white background in there, so it's only drawing on that. Uh, we'll hit Control Z to put that guy back, and we'll take it off of the drawn white background. I can also change my effects. I can give it an italic. I can bold my my whole uh, text in there. Give it an underline if I wanted to. Give it a drop shadow. Once I have hit that drop shadow, now I have the option to change this here. And I want it. We'll pick some RGB color and let's see if we can get somewhere. Uh, maybe a purple color there for my drop shadow. I can change the offset so it's a little bit closer. I can give this an outline color if I wanted to. There's all sorts of different variables in here that I can change. I can even change the background color of this square that it's in. So I could make it into any number of different colors. And I'm just going to give it something so you can see it there. And it would fill that whole field with the color that I picked. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm going to make that transparent because we don't want anything in there. We also have the other column here, the player number. So we need to adjust that one. And when we select that whole column, it's going to do the whole column for us. And we'll see what uh, 100 will do for there. That's not too bad for my font size. And we'll change this to maybe an Arial Bold. We'll do Arial, and we'll make it bold so it's a little bit thicker on there. And I could go through and change my italicize, add a drop shadow, any of those different functions like that. But I've got this pretty well set up where I want it to be. So once we're done with that there, Remember in our layout, we only had one of the items showing, but now you can see that I've created all of these by putting that variable data field in there and feeding in the variable data from that comma separated value file, that CSV file that we created in Excel. And now I have them all set up in order to print and cut all the way down. And this is going to make things much faster and easier for me. If the team had supplied me with the names and numbers I wouldn't even need to do too terrible much to it. Just add that field header at the top of it, and I can create these very quickly. So that's the example for the t-shirts there. Let's look real quick at the tag that we made earlier. So we're going to add that one to the queue, and we'll go down to the property tag, hit open on that, and we can see again it's got the variable data field in there, and I'll open up the job, go down to my variable data printing function, I'll enable variable data printing, Again, I need to open up that Excel spreadsheet that we created, so I'll go looking for that. And I've got in here serial numbers, as I created before. And immediately, I've got all my serial numbers all set up on this. I do want to change the alignment on it, so I'll change my alignment to bring it over. I want it to go left next to where the, the control tag number portion is. And you can see this looks real grainy. This isn't a, a low-res preview on it. I don't need this to look perfect on the screen. So once I've done that, I go back to my layout. And you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this better, all the different tags in here, and it's created them in sequential number, and I've got it very quickly and very easily set up so I can do control tags, property inventory tags, anything like that very quickly uh, using the variable data function of the RIP software that I have. So this is a quick overview and some examples of variable data printing. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or would like to find out more about it, you can contact me. It's Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, at imprintables.com, or you can contact me directly at 518-630-6655, or you can contact any of us in Printables Warehouse at 1-800-347-0068. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today.